Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Posted Up with Chris Haynes podcast here on Yahoo Sports. My guest today, I have to introduce you guys to him because you're going to hear a lot more about him in the near future. Um, I'm bringing on a brother who came out of high school, one of the top players in high school. He chose not to go to college, he chose to play in a G League with the Ignite team. And he had just coming off a tremendous season, averaging 18 points a game, 19 years old. There's still a lot of upside for this kid. Jaden Hardy, I want to say thank you, brother, for coming on. Man, just tell me real quick, man, what was the season like for you, man? This is the path you take. Not everybody can say that they went down that path. What was it like for you this season? And congratulations on completing it. Yeah, appreciate that and appreciate that, Chris, for having me on here. But um, yeah, it's been a, it was a great season. I mean, coming in, coaches challenged me. I mean, just to, they was trying to add to my game. So just being there and just learning from the vets and playing against NBA talent every game, I feel like it has prepared me for the next level. Did it? When did it hit you? Because you finished the season strong. You had a couple thirty point games this season. Um, when did it hit you that okay? I can do what I was doing in high school at this level. Was there a certain game? Was there a practice when you realized, okay, no, nah, I'm, I'm a kill here too? Yeah, I mean, I always felt like I could kill. Uh, it was just like me just getting comfortable out there, just like being comfortable, like like getting situated with everybody, like getting to know like what everybody like to do and then just getting comfortable like out there. Because it's like you got to get adjusted to it out there. Like the game was much faster. You're playing against stronger players. And you playing against people that's like trying to feed their family. So you it like, I mean, like it's something you got to get adjusted to. But I always felt like I was talented enough. And I felt like I had the skill behind me to play, play at this level at a very high level and compete at this level. So, And then you also had the element of guys knowing like this is this young high school cat. How, how did you manage that aspect of coming into the, the G League at night and trying to prove yourself but knowing there's older guys – Mm -hmm. that are going to try to make an example out of you? Yeah, I mean, it was just like coming into it, like being having that confidence out there, really. Just like, and then just putting all those hours of work in, like I got the confidence in myself. So I wasn't really worried about that. But I mean, I do feel like, like coming in, like you is going to get everybody's best game because all the eyes is on their night team. So they this, they feel like it's their opportunity, like for, to, for, for them to be seen. So I feel like, like every game, like once we, every game that we play, like we gonna get their best game. So I felt like having that, like aspect of it, was great because I feel like it's, it helped me and it's gonna prepare me. We're talking to Jaden Hardy here. He's going to be he's a lottery prospect, going to be entering the 2022 NBA draft. Man, when, when you hear about that, like when you just hear about the, the NBA draft coming mm -hmm. up, like what 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 comes to your mind now that this is 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 coming closer and closer? I mean, what comes to my mind, I mean, I'm just blessed to be blessed to have this opportunity, man. Just thankful for it. Like it's something I've been working for towards my whole life. And just like growing up watching basketball and my dad putting the ball in my hands and now coming to this point, I mean, I'm about to get ready to get get into the draft. I mean, I'm blessed and I'm thankful for the opportunity. I'll talk about your pops, man. I met your pops in um in Cleveland. And I didn't Jay, I didn't get the running I didn't get the running to you. I meant to come um come say what's up to you, but I was the sideline reporter for the um Rising Stars game that okay. you played in. Uh -huh. So I wanna I wanna ask you about that experience. But tell me about Pops, man, because I know he's very influential. He was a baller himself back in the day. Tell me about mm -hmm. at, how he was for you when you were an adolescent growing up. Was he rough, tough? Just tell me about your upbringing with your pops and the relationship you have with him. Yeah, my relationship with my pops is very close. I mean, I mean, he the one that just put the ball in my hand. So I mean, he, I mean, growing up, I mean, I felt like he was tough on me, like because he he was pushing us, he pushing me and my brother like to get to the top. But I mean, I feel like that's what made me. That's what that's what plays a big part in where I am today, and I'm very thankful for my pops and just having him. I feel like he always gonna tell me. He always gonna keep it real with me. Like he gonna tell me when I'm wrong. He gonna tell me when I'm doing stuff right. But, I mean, overall, I mean, I love my pops. So just having him in my circle and just having him, like, here, like, it's a blessing. Your pops, Ramsey, played back in the day. They believe he played for Tuskegee. Yeah. What, 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 did, what, did, what, did, what did he tell you about his game back uh, in the his, day? His game, he was a shooter. Like, okay. Yeah, he was a shooter. Like, got a stri he had a strap on him. So, I mean, that's, <laughs> I got, that's, he taught me how to shoot. So, 
I mean, what's up? Yeah, he was known as a shooter back in the day. Like, I used to ask all his friends about his game. They used to be like, yeah, yo, Pops, he was tough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All-Star Weekend, this is the first year they allowed for a top player of the G League Ignite to participate in that Rising Stars game. When you got that invitation, what was going through your mind? And then tell me about the experience of being a part of that. Yeah, when I got the invitation, I mean, I was super excited. I mean, super grateful for the that I was chosen. I mean, and then just like having that experience and like being in that atmosphere and like being around all those players, those star players and like seeing it up close, again, it takes of what's about to come. I mean, it was great. I feel like and just having that, being out there, it was super fun. I want to say that when you first, well, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. I'll, I'll let you answer that. So we're in March Madness right now and Highly touted. Nobody knew what you were going to do pretty much till last minute when you made your decision. Ultimately, if you didn't pick to go the G League route, where would what college would you have chosen? Uh, I mean, I don't even know for real because it was like so many like coaching changes like with the schools that I was looking at and then like like players that they was going to keep. Like it would have just like I would have had to been like one of those uh, situations where I knew I was going to be coming in and like knew like I was gonna be like in the best spot that I wanted to be in. So, I mean, looking back, I mean, I don't really know for real, but I mean, mm. my choice is like, like watching, like, I mean, I had a couple good choices, so I don't even know where I would have went, to be honest, okay. I can't even tell you. Got you, and so I wanna ask about like, when you were preparing to make your decision, um, when you were thinking about, obviously coaching changes, that had a lot to do uh, with it as well, but, the G League at that point, the G League at night was, I believe, a year in existence before you came in. Mm -hmm. Who did you talk to? Did you talk to Jalen Green? Uh, you know, he did it before you. Who did you talk to? Who brains did you pick to know if this was the route that you needed to go down? Yeah. Uh, coming, into, coming into that, yeah. Coming into that, yeah, I talked to Jalen Green, Jonathan Kaminga, and Dacia Nix. I talked to all That's three right. of those. Uh, wanted to get their perspective on it and, like, how they, they experienced, how they liked it. And really, they just told me, like, man, they enjoyed it. Like, just being a pro, like, locking in on getting better every day. And then just, like, being able to, like, to work on your game. Like, you ain't really got to work on, worry about no school, like, work. Just, like, working on your game. And I feel like that's what's going to separate. I mean, that's the best thing that separates the uh, Ignite from college. Like, you just being able to work on your game all, at all times. Like, you working on your body. You trying to improve. Like, you fighting against grown men, NBA talent. So, you just working on your game. So living that pro lifestyle. And that's one thing I think you're going to have people that come into your shoes going from the G League route to the NBA. I think that's going to be a benefit is the fact that you have a year of being a pro, M mm -hmm. meaning not just not going to school, but you got some money in your pocket. So you're dealing with uh, what comes with having money now. You're dealing with a little bit of a notoriety and trying to fend off people who – probably shouldn't be in your circle and things like so you got a little experience you got a little ups can you just tell me about um having money you know a little you know you, you yeah. first of all you're gonna make more money than you got now but you got a little bit more money than what what college players have can you just tell me about like how that process was for you to to integrate that into your lifestyle and try to uh, change and adapt yeah i mean just like having that i mean it's just helpful for my me and my family like just like it's good like to get us off get our feet off the ground so just like having that like a contract like where you just like getting your money like you you earning that like you worked hard for that so you earn it and i mean just but like i feel like it's it's about like the long term i wasn't even really focused on that i was just worried about know, just getting better like going into it trying to add to my game like and just like work on my craft zane how, how often do you look at mock drafts uh, I don't even look at them for real because I don't even really pay attention to them for real. So do, does anybody, I don't know if it's family members or friends, does anybody like tell you, hey, Jay, you see this? You see where they got you slotted here? Do you do you get any of that chattering? Yeah, here? I mean, I be seeing it like, yeah, it's like, it's been like times where like people ask something to me, but I ask me like about it. But I just be like, man, I don't even care about that. Like, I already know what's up. Like, I ain't even tripping on it. So where do you see, where, where do you feel – Jaden Harder, where do you feel is the proper slot for you to be drafted in this upcoming NBA draft? 
I feel like I'm the best player in this draft, if you ask me. I feel like playing at this playing at the NBA G League, playing for the in the NBA G League, I mean it's the second best league in the world. Like I didn't play against people that's playing in like NBA in the NBA right now. Like like Moses Moody, Jonathan Kaminga, like those guys on the Warriors like getting good minutes and like like they were just playing against me. So just like I'm playing against NBA talent, level guys, like everything. And not only that, but I'm learning like every game. Like I'm getting more comfortable. Like I'm learning from my mistakes. I'm watching film and like playing against vets. Like you it's, you start to pick up things like what they what they doing out there, like tricks and stuff. So just like I feel like I'm the best player in this draft class, if you ask me. I love it. I, I love I love the confidence right there. Do you feel as you're going into the process, do you feel like uh, people may be sleeping on you at this point. Yeah, I feel like people are sleeping on me. Uh, I feel like yeah, they don't really know. They they ain't really seen my whole bag yet. So I feel like they really, they sleeping on me for real. So Jay, it's going to get to a point where you're going to start having meetings, interviews with general managers, a couple owners as well. And they're going to ask you some weird questions and some questions that's going to try to catch you off guard. But when you take those meetings, what is one thing that you want them to come away with? What's one thing you want them to know about you as a basketball player and as a young man? Yeah, as a basketball player, I want them to know that I'm a winner. Uh, I'm a playmaker. Like, I'm coming in. Like, I'm a great teammate. Like, I want to see other guys succeed, too. And, like, being like being in them positions, like, I'm, I want to learn. Like, I'm trying to get better, too, like, every day. So, it's just, like, I want to be able to, like, to come in, pick those players' brains, try to learn, like, and then – off the court, like I want them to know, like I'm hard working, like I'm approaching it, I'm taking this very seriously. Like I know, like I've been doing this for a year now, playing pro, so I already know what, it, what it's like, like coming in and like getting straight to it, like getting your work done. So I'm already knowing that's the approach I got coming in. I'm trying to get better every day. You've been compared to Bradley Beal, around the same height, same type of body built. Would you say that's an accurate comparison? I know you don't want to say you're a star, but, you know, just just the attributes, or do you have another player in mind that you think you're more comparable with right now? Uh, yeah, I, I like the I like the Brad Bill comparison. I feel like our, our our frames are pretty much similar, and then I watch a lot of film on Brad Bill. I, I really like his game, but I feel like there's other people players, too, that I feel like games that's, like, in mind, like, such as, like, Damian Lillard, his ability, like, to knock down shots from deep and, like, being able to create for his teammates, he's a playmaker. So I feel like Dame and James Harden being able to help James Harden with his ability to create space and get off his shots. So I feel like those two are like other comparisons too, but I like the Brad Beal comparison as well. Okay, so most people will say your natural position is the two guard. Mm -hmm. Would you say you're more of a combo guard or do you have a position? What What would you say to that? Yeah, I would say I'm more of a combo guard. I play, I like playing the one and the two, but I mean, I'm comfortable like either or. That's, I feel like that's what Ignite prepared me for, like to to be able to play the one or the two. Like I feel like coming in, the coach has challenged me like to play more of the off ball, like learning like what to do, like setting screens, moving without the ball. So I feel like that's, that's, that's adding, that added to my game. With March Madness going on right now, are you watching much of it? Uh, yeah, I've been watching it lately. How does it feel for you? Like, just you, you skipped that and went to you know went mm -hmm. this route. Is is it tough for you to watch, or how 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 was it for you? Uh, it's not really tough for me to watch. I mean, it's just like I feel like whatever happens, like it's all in God's plan. So I feel like I mean, I'm not really like even worried about what's 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 going on like there. Like, but I'm just like watching the ball, watching, watching it, cause I, I mean, I like watching basketball, so no doubt. That, that's that's really what it is. For real. So your season just concluded. Mm -hmm. What do, what do you do now to get yourself prepared for these workouts that I anticipate you're going to have leading up to the NBA draft? Yeah, I mean, right now it's, I'm just really just like getting my body right, trying to get my body right, getting stronger, and then just going to the gym, like getting trying to get better, protect, perfecting my craft. And like working on details, just like being very detailed in my workouts and just trying to be, get better. Is there any one aspect of your game that you want to improve upon before you take those workouts? Is there anything that you're really like hitting on right now? Uh, right now, that what I'm hitting on just really just like like getting stronger and then like just like getting my release off quicker 
And then just really like working on my ball handling for real. That's that's the things that I feel like uh that I've been uh working on. Then not only that, but just improving my defense too, like being able to like move, like working on my agility and my speed. And that's what I, I seen when you're talking about handling the ball. That's why I'm looking at some of your highlights. Uh, you like you've been putting in a lot of more pick and roll situations with the ignite, and obviously we know the NBA. That's 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 where the offense is heavy driven on that. How do you feel you've evolved in being a pick and roll player to this point? Uh, yeah, in the pick and roll, I feel like nobody can stop me. Honestly, mm. like be, like being in that, I feel like that's 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 one of my strong strengths. Like being able to make those reads out of the pick and roll, and like find an open man or knock down, take the great shot, good shot, open shot. So I feel like in the pick and roll, like in the NBA, like like you said, like that's where the offense coming from. I feel like in the pick and roll, like I can't be stopped. That's what I feel. Hey, when you when you get to that league, where wherever wherever it's gonna it's gonna happen, but whatever is wherever it's gonna be at, whatever market, what is your ultimate goal in the league? Like some players have aspirations of making it. Mm-hmm. Some have aspirations beyond that to, you know, play play ten years. Some have all stars. Whatever it may be, it, it's their goals. It's their progress. What about you? What are your aspirations? What are your ultimate goals once you do make it to the league? Uh, my aspiration in this league is I'm trying to leave a legacy behind. Uh, like coming in, like I mean, I'm trying to be. I want to win championships. Like mm. I'm trying to be like. I want to win like rookie of the year, but that's just like accolades and stuff. But I'm not really like, I want to come in. I'm trying to leave a legacy behind and I want to win championships. That's my main goal in the NBA. And see, when you're talking about rookie of the year, you talk about coming in and making an immediate impact. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that doesn't happen if you're not ready. And I think that speaks to your point where you feel like the G League at night really helped you get to the point where you feel like you could come in and be ready for a team off the bat. Uh, I want to say, tell me about the, the coaching staff of the Ignite. You know, talk to me about how they've helped you mature and, and tell me what they challenged you on. That's what I want to know. What did they challenge you on this past season? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, what they challenged me on, like, if you seen, like, watch me in high school and stuff like that, you seen, like, like I was more like a like a guard, like, like a lead guard, like coming down, like, like I was just like letting it go. So like they challenged on me, like challenged me like on my shot selection, like helping me take better shots, like and then like playing with like without the ball, like like how much like like they were just helping me like understand the game more, like seeing it from like a different perspective. Like and I feel like that really helped me. Like like being able to like set screens, like moving without the ball, how much like that opens up the floor for you. And just like mm-hmm. like like being able to like to use my teammates and just like like different stuff like that. I feel like that, that helped me. So. When you go from high school, well, typically when you go from college to high school, but in your case, mm-hmm. high school to the pros, that basketball is different. It's a it's the, the it's it's a different texture. Yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of people, <laughs> it takes a lot lot a lot of like casual fans or mm-hmm. regular fans for that matter. They don't know that. Like there's a preparation of trying to get adjusted to that ball. Yeah. What was it like for you, uh, trying to get get a feel for that that different texture? Yeah, I mean, it's for sure adjustment with the ball because, like, in high school, you playing with the orange ball. Like, those balls are so easy to shoot with. I don't think, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't think people understand. The grip. Like, yeah, the grip, the too. Grip them balls. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's easy to shoot with. Like, if you go back and look at clips, or, like, me in high school, like, I was shooting that with ease. So, like, that adjustment to that ball is, like, it's real. It's, like, a different because, like, with, with those balls, like, they not as much grippy. Like, you got to get, like, mm-hmm. sweat, like, you gotta get sweat yeah. like on the ball, like for you to even start getting a little bit of grip. But I feel like yeah, it's adjustment with the ball, and then the three point line is also longer. So it's like mm-hmm. you you working with different adjustments coming out of straight out of high school, and not only that, but like the game is faster too. So like you playing at a different pace, and you playing the physicality is different. So it's like some adjustments that you gotta get to. But I feel like I did a good job of adjusting to it and learning and getting better. And that's why. I bring that up for the listeners and the viewers who are watching and hearing this is that like all these adjustments that I'm talking about, and I'm not trying to like highlight the ignite over college, but I'm just, I'm trying to highlight that all these adjustments that we're talking about, he's gone through it already, you know, taking the route that he took, he went through it already. And so opposed to a person coming out of college, they're going to have to adjust on the fly. And Mm -hmm. I, I hear a lot of, I hear a lot about like 
a lot of players when they're going into their draft workouts, you know, they they haven't had much time and experience with that ball. Yeah. And they're going into the workouts, they're not feeling comfortable. So those are little things. You know, those are very little things. And to each his own, everybody doesn't have those issues, but those are little things that I'm trying to share with you guys just to see, like, why he's probably going to be more prepared than a lot of prospects that come out here. I got, I had a couple more questions for you, Jay, and then, then, I, then I'll let you go. Okay. Um, tell me about your background. You're from you're from um, you're from the West Coast. Uh, what what part of Nevada? No, I'm from I'm from I'm originally from Detroit, but you're, that's right, that's right, that's right. Pops told me that's right. The religion <laughs> from Detroit. Play high school in um in Nevada. That's right. Yeah, yeah, so t- tell me about what led you over there from Detroit to over there. That's different. Detroit yeah. and, <laughs> and the West, that's totally different. Yeah, so, like, when it was time for me, like, to come into high school, like, my brother, he was going to college, and he had chose UNLV. So, he like, went to Oregon. He played at Oregon as well, right? Yeah, he, yep, he, fin- he just finished up at Oregon. Uh, uh-huh. Not this year, but the past year. Yep. But, yeah, coming in, like, he, he, he went to UNLV, so we decided to follow him. And just, like, that's how we got out here. Got you, got you. That makes sense. Tell what 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 about? Tell me about a little bit about Detroit, man. Mm-hmm. For you, tell me about your upbringing in Detroit. Describe if people have never been to Detroit because I always dog on it. Back in the day when the Pistons played in Auburn Hills, okay, it was all yeah, it was all. We'll we, we land in Detroit. <laughs> it's like a 45 minute hour drive all the way out to Auburn Hills, and so so that's probably my bias right there. I didn't I didn't experience real Detroit. You know, mm-hmm. I just hated that. So, t- tell me about tell me about Detroit a little bit. Yeah, I mean, growing up in Detroit, like I mean, I loved. It. I feel like that's what made me like having that Detroit grit, like that toughness. Like I feel like like growing up, like that's what it was all about. Like when we was hooping, so, and just like like growing up, like I used to play for the Detroit family AAU. If you ever heard of them, yes, just, sir. Like, like coming out of there, like having that AAU team, like. You playing against the best guys in Detroit, and I feel like Detroit, like talent, is really slept on. I feel like it's a lot of talented uh, guys that come out of there, and it's a lot of talent that's there right now. But like, yeah, just like going up there, like I feel like that's what, like that's that's where I, that's the reason why I am where I am today. Okay, well, I'll give him, I'll give him another shot. I'll I'll try to make my way out there and see <laughs> yeah, yeah. see if it, see if it changes my mind. Detroit, nah. So like, if you go there, you are gonna get the better experience. Nah, you are gonna get the real Detroit experience. All right. Day in the, day in tell, the city, nah. <laughs> day okay, in the tell city. tell pops tell pops. <laughs> I expect him to give me a tour around, man. Yeah, he's sure. gonna give you a tour. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I, I'll get you. I'll get you out with this, uh, Jay. You, your agent, just, your agent is Rich Paul. Yeah. Uh, clutch Sports. So they're doing big things. One of the top agencies in the in the country. I I I've, I used to cover the Cavaliers back in shoot almost ten years ago. So me and Rich go yeah. way back. Yeah. So I remember when he started with just like three players, three clients. But what what ultimately led you to sign with with Clutch? Uh, I feel like just like that the relationship aspect that we had with him. I feel like I mean. Yeah, it was really like that relationship aspect and just, just like, I feel like they, I mean, they plan was the best for me and then just, like, I feel like they're going to help me. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see what's going to happen. But I know this part. You did your point. You did your, you did your part up to this point. Uh, at 19, 18, 19, going in, doing what you're doing in the, in, the, in the G League, that's not an easy feat. So I'm looking forward to you, man, to see what you're going to do at the next level, and uh, I want to see. You may not look at mock drafts, but I look at them. So I, I want to see. Uh, I, I want to see if they start giving you the respect that uh, that you deserve, man. So mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to, man. I appreciate you coming on this podcast and kind of shed some light on who you are mm-hmm. and uh, what you're going to do, man. So any parting shots, Jay? Anything you want to say before you, you sign out of here, man? Uh, I mean. I am the best shooter in this draft class. I mean, don't ever get that messed up. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, just thanks, Chris, for having me, man. For real. I mean, I appreciate hey, I, I appreciate you for coming on, man. Yeah, that was Jaden Hardy of the G League Ignite, who's entering this year's NBA Draft 2022. The best shooter in the draft. He says he's the best player in this upcoming draft. Check him out. Follow him. Look at his highlights. And uh, hey, shout out your shout out your social medias that you use. 
Oh yeah, on Instagram my at is J Hardy, and on Twitter my Instagram, I mean my Twitter at is Jaden Hardy One. Okay, y'all, y'all check them out. I think the kid is going to I think the kid is going to prove a lot of people wrong. So everybody, thank you for joining us on the Posted Up with Chris Haynes podcast here on Yahoo Sports. I'm telling you right now, y'all know I don't bring anybody on this on this show who who doesn't pan out. I'm telling you right now, this this kid is going to he's going to be nice. Everybody take care. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Have a great weekend. Peace.